are now live and on lockdown. Are you ready? Ready, ready? Broadcasting from Edinburgh, Scotland and across the globe. Listen here. You're listening to Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders podcast. The host, Fraser Ramsey. Hi, this is Afia Letha from KingdomBeats.com. Proud to be a sponsor of Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders. On Hi, this is Zakia Ringgold from NaturalSoapByZakia.com. Proud sponsors of the Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders podcast. And welcome to another edition of Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders with your host, Fraser Ramsey. And my guest is Cynthia Zai. Had I pronounced that correctly? Yes, close. Uh, uh, close enough. <laughs> Very close. Cynthia Zai. We will we'll get the pronunciation properly. So welcome to the It's been a while since I've done a podcast. Uh, it's summertime. It's the time of year when things are busy. So podcasting does take a little bit of a back seat on the Ramsey and these podcasts. Um, but yeah, we're back. As I say, we've got lot, lots of things coming up in the show. We've got an interview with Cynthia. Um, she's going to tell us about her background. She's originally from China, but lives in Singapore. Um, we're going to talk, have our usual 60 second singing tips by Benita Charles from BenitaCharlesMusic.com or BenitaCharles.com. Um, shout out to our usual supporters and, uh, who uh, support the show and the people who are uh, always encourage us and keep moving forward. Um, we'll have some music. We're going to have a, a tune from Stuart Darietta. Stuart Darietta is coming back to the Edinburgh Festival. Edinburgh Festival to perform. He's doing my Leonard Cohen this year again. He did last year. He did the Belly of the Drunken Piano. And the year before, he did my Leonard Cohen. So we'll play one of his tunes. So just to publicise uh, the upcoming festival show in the Edinburgh Fringe this year at the Assembly Festival on the Assembly Rooms in George Street. So we look forward to seeing him when he come, arrives. He arrives uh, just the end of July and kicks off on the 1st of August. It's, it's all go. It's all go. We want to, and we've also got another tune by Sherry Marie, who's an R&B artist uh, from uh, America as well. So we're going to be playing a couple of tunes during the show. But as I say, general shout-outs and, as I say, our 60-second singing tips with uh, Benita Charles later on in the show. But we're here, so I want to say good morning to from my end because it's morning where I am and it's afternoon where Cynthia is. So welcome, my guest, to Ramsey on the Screen Beyond Borders. Welcome, Cynthia. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. That's good. So how's uh, t- tell us a little about? Okay, tell us a little about your obviously you're, you're brought up in. This is do I usually try and mix and match things I'm interviewing and find out what people do now and then maybe go back into life and what growing up and things. But we'll just do. You were born and brought up in China, yes? Yes. So tell us about life growing up in China, obviously with China being a very, it's quite a strict country that she has had, it's gone from being a, a one, a, from, they've recently changed the rules, I know that they've been from just a one child parent family to now you can have now more, but what was life growing up, What is tell us about life in China growing up from, I know there's different scales of the spectrum, but Tell us uh, about what life is like in China growing up. I think a lot of people, or because they don't, they don't know China much, so they always have all kinds of uh, assumptions toward people in China. I was born after the uh, open door policy, and it was actually great. I wouldn't say that it's. Uh, I don't feel anything. I grow. I grew up happy, grew up uh, achieving, and uh, grew up having a good life. So, <laughs> and uh, even though, you know, probably that's outsider's view that China is strict, but if I didn't come to Singapore, I didn't know that Singapore is much more strict. So you cannot uh, eat in the trains in Singapore, but in China you can eat in the trains. And uh, yeah, so I think it's, um, for me, it's pretty, pretty okay. So tell us, about, tell, us, well, tell us a bit about China. Tell us about your, just your more... I mean, obviously you grew up well, but tell us just things about China that people may not know about China in your where you grew up. Tell us things that happened, family okay. life, school. How So for somebody who wants to maybe potentially ever go to China and live, and I mean, mm. talk, talk about the, I mean, obviously yeah. from... So I think, yeah, of course that language will be a barrier for many people because in China, English is not widely spoken. But right now, if you go to big cities like Beijing, Shanghai, all these big cities, uh, especially young people, they can speak English very well. Um, 
And of course, that China is so big, everywhere is so different. So even for me, I grew up in the north, a city t- near、uh, Beijing called Tianjin. And、uh, so there is very different from people in the south. So even I couldn't understand some of the languages from the south, the dialect. Like for example, Shanghai. In Shanghai, they speak Shanghainese, so I couldn't understand. And、uh, also, people from Canton, they speak Cantonese, and I couldn't understand. So it's so big, it's so diverse, and、uh, yeah. So that's what I want to share. That's cool. That's good. So I just、uh, that's, that's brilliant. So it's good to a bit of a background. So,、uh, so what、yeah. when? When did you? What age were you? I mean, what was school like for you? School life was quite. I mean, what's the school system like over there? I mean, how did it compare、okay. to like、yeah. maybe over in the US or in、It's, the UK?、Um, yeah, I think I'm not very familiar with the educational system in the UK,、um, but you know, in China, the、uh, as a student, it's very stressful. So now it's probably better, but at my time,、uh, we have the saying that is thousands of people would go on a small bridge.、Uh, is the small bridge is like thousands of people going on a small bridge to go to college, because we have such a big population and so many people they want to go to、uh, the university, but the、uh, number of people who can go to university is very limited. So that's why at my time, that's about. Twenty years ago, during high school, it was very、uh, stressful, and、uh, so I remember that <laughs> going through high school actually let me know and let me realize that I would never go to any types of study anymore. And、uh, so that's why when I finished my college, I didn't want to go to graduate school and I didn't want to go to pursue PhD, but.、Uh, In China, there's another thing, probably a little bit different from the Western world, which is that the parents they have a much bigger say at home. So the same goes to my family. So my parents said, "You need to go to graduate school." So even if I resist, I couldn't do do anything. So in the end, I followed their will. I went to graduate school. So that's、uh, how school is like in China. And also that we focus probably too much、um, on studying the theory. There's not a lot of opportunity for、uh, practice pro- for practical kind of skills.、Um, so I think I even actually we have the internship. The internship is not much practice. So it's more focusing on the theory, less on practical. So what was your?、Um... So what what kind of skills did you what what was the topics that you studied and what was the what did you actually when you left school what was the what did you go into or what did, what was your first job for example or、mm. um, for me I was studying for my、uh, bachelor my degree was economics、mm. so it's actually about international trade and、uh, so I didn't. I didn't、uh, go for, look for a job after that, so I went to graduate school、uh, right away. In my graduate school, my major was business management, but still, I felt that that was too much、uh, theory, and that's why actually in the beginning I resisted going to graduate school because I wanted to learn some practical kind of skills. But my parents insisted me <laughs> going to graduate school. So in graduate school, it's again、uh, a lot of theory, not too much practical. And、uh, for my first job, and that's why it took me quite a long time to find a job. So my very first job was、uh, doing training workshop、uh, coordination. So I was helping the company to organize the training workshops, and also to recruit,、um, also recruit the、uh, participants. Kind of like sales, but I was so bad at it because I've never learned anything about sales, and、uh, also it was I think I was、uh, fearful of rejection, so I wasn't able to <laughs> get as many participants at all. And then I moved on to my second job, which was human resources. So I thought, okay, I do good with people, maybe I'll try out、uh, human resources. So I'm、um, I was glad that my Back then, boss 
So she saw my potential. And uh, even though I didn't have any human resources uh, experience, so she recruited me. And uh, that was my second job because my first job didn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So anyway, well, welcome. Uh, human resources uh, and recruiting people is always, uh, it can't be easy. It's not an easy job to find staff with the right people to fit roles, which is not easy. Um, but uh, well, we'll come back, we'll take a small, quick break. Um, we'll play our usual 60, or play our trusty 60 second singing tips with Benita Charles. So you'll hear that in the break. We'll play a tune by Stuart Darietta. Stuart Darietta is an uh, Australian singer songwriter. He uh, sold out the Sydney Opera House in Australia and he is performing in the Edinburgh Festival with, again with my Leonard Cohen at the Assembly uh, Assembly Festival. So uh, he'll be here at this, this festival. Look forward to seeing him, catching up with him and uh, helping sh- promote his show. But uh, he'll be here with... Um, we're going to play one of Stuart's songs of my, from my Leonard Cohen album, He Has, and we'll be back in a second. And also Benita Charles, a great supporter, and it's great to support Benita with her 60-second singing tips that she does every every Saturday night, stroke Sunday, when she's in New York. Uh, and it's great to support listening to them every morning when I wake up on a Sunday morning and I get to ch- ch- f- uh, sh- uh, hear what she's been talking about. Uh, so it's all good, always good. So we'll be back in a bit uh, after these, mo- Benita and Stuart. Hi, this is Benita Charles from BenitaCharles.com on Ramsey Unleashed, Going Beyond Borders with your 60-second singing tip. Today's tip is about time. Why is it that there never seems to be enough time? There are 24 hours in a day. That's enough time to get something accomplished, one would think. However, How you use your time is more important than how much time you have. You can have all the time in the world, but if you don't use it wisely, it's lost. You can't get it back. That's why you have to make the most of your time every day. Time waits for no one. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for the next 60-second singing tip on Ramsey Unleashed, Going Beyond Borders. you 
And welcome back to Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders with my guest, Cynthia. Is it, how did you pronounce your last name? Jai. Jai. Uh, Jai. So it's like a, it's like a yes. J, not Zai. So it's, it's Jai. So Cynthia Jai. <laughs> so we've got Cynthia yes. all the way from Singapore, originally from China. We've just been having a brief in, insight to her, obviously, a little bit of education in China and uh, her background, uh, for going to sort of her first jobs. Um, in what she studied, um, obviously it's quite a strict regime in China with uh, it's all kind of theory and not no practical side. So uh, obviously, when you sometimes there's a lot in this day and age, it's you get the intellectual, the academic side, but you don't get the practical. You sometimes you get people who are more practically b- based and not the academic. But and that's the the, the bizarre thing these days. It's not easy. So you you, you need in this day in, in the modern day age, you need the skill, you need the practical skills to get a job. But you may have the uh, qualifications, but you may not have the qualifications. You may have, and vice versa. And it can, you can. It's, it's such a crazy system sometimes uh, for getting work. But well, um, but as I say, so Cynthia, um, how did you find uh, working in uh, HR, and how did you? Wh- wh- where did that take you in your development going forward? It was. Um... I think it was, in a way, it was suitable for me because I was able, even though I was very young at the time, but I can read people well. So I am very good at uh, not only dealing with people, uh, communicating with people, but uh, reading people. So in a way that my, my that was my talent. But pro- at the like same a, time. Almost like a profiler. Yeah. <laughs> like a, like, <laughs> yeah. very, very, that's, that's a good way like of reading uh, like a criminal profiler almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like the FBI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's why I like to watch the Criminal Minds. <laughs> ah, I, I love, I love, I love Criminal Minds. It was very good. It got to the stage. Yeah. It got, to get, it got near the end. But we'll come back talk about TV stuff later on. <laughs> yeah. So you like so, to read people. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, but at the same time, I felt that I was. I always wanted to do something that like operations, because I feel reading and just helping people fit in the right role is still kind of feel there's some lack and the lack was I wanted to go really into business understand the business understand how business operates so that's why and also because I had a very uh, um, very tough boss who was uh, somewhat bullying and uh, so I decided to leave that job and then at the time there was an opening in Singapore and I applied, and I got the job. So I moved to Singapore. Cool. And uh, yeah, that so, was about twelve years ago. Wow! So, so basically, what the job you got in Singapore? What was that? Was that that was the uh, what was the job again? You said uh, so. It was to help people. It's also doing training, and mm. uh, we train people on leadership and communication. Ah. And also uh, that help that actually gave me more understanding about how the business was running because part of our job is to go into the stores and to talk with the frontline staff. So basically developing in the, in the area. So what was the actual company you worked for? Was it, are you allowed to see the company? <laughs> what was the, are you still working with them or are you not with them, with them anymore? I, 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 I don't, I, I have stopped working with them 12, okay. 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. 10 years ago. So it's a quick, uh, and then you've now moved on. Did you, what did you do next after them? Was it, did you become self-employed? So after or? that, yes, self-employed. Wow. So I've been uh, doing my own business for the past 10 years. Congratulations. And uh, that company, yeah, thank you. That company was, uh, it did equip me with some skills on teaching, mm-hmm. training, coaching, and after that, so I decided, I thought, okay, because I want to have more autonomy. And uh, when we are training for companies, the topics are decided and we have to follow in certain structure. So I don't like to be structured into a box. So I decided to come out and uh, do my own programs. So that was 10 years ago. And uh, so here I am. So how did you, so let's talk, well, so you start your own program, you're now self-employed. When, when did you start getting your first clients coming in or how did you market yourself to gain mm. your first business? Yeah, so I think uh, for me, um, in many ways, from other people's eyes, they said, oh, you are almost a foreigner. I am. I was a foreigner here and I didn't have much contact. And they they would think that, oh, it would be super difficult. And uh, for me, in the beginning, it was but my first client, uh, it was a training client, a training uh, project. 
So that client, actually, I got before I even tended my uh, resignation. <laughs> All right, <that's> <laughs> because I, I, yes, I already started to tell people. I said I'm going to start on my own. And uh, there was one person I met in a in a course that I was attending, and uh, so I think she. She she decided to work with work with me, and then we did one training project. So that was my first client. It does. It was good to get your first client on board. It's uh, especially when you start a yeah. business. It's when you get that first person yeah. and grow from there. So how fast did you after your first client? How fast did your business develop and grow? Yeah. So I think also from the more of the the experience in getting the first client is go out and uh, meet people. So it's the same for my next client. It was also that I went out and meet different people. So it was networking. And uh, that was how I got um, my first few clients. It was through networking. That's fantastic. That's good. So I, and it's, brilliant. it's like myself, you got to push yourself to get the business and get the clients and market yourself. It's if you don't market yourself, you're never going to get the yeah. business. It's not easy. It's a, it's a vicious world being self-employed. Vicious world. And it's yeah. sometimes it's never ending. <laughs> so um, yeah. as, as, you, as you start off quiet and you get busy and busy uh, as time goes by. But uh, it's uh, it's multitasking uh, to, the, to the extreme. Yes. But uh, but let's tell us a bit more about that dive in. So t- tell us a bit more of the insights of, into your business. Go into the whole, what, the, the, the features and benefits of what you you're about mm. what you do in training. So if, I, if there's a potential mm. customer listening to this podcast, they, yes. or somebody listening and you want to know exactly really what you do differently to maybe a general kind of style coach or whatever mm-hmm. training that are mm. out there already. Yes. So uh, I help people develop and speak with a powerful voice. So it's to work on the physical voice and to help them sound more authoritative. So that whenever they speak in meetings, people will see them as the expert. And whenever they speak in conferences, people will see them as the expert and come up to them, want to do business with them. So that's what I do in a nutshell. Right, okay. So give us, uh, can you give us some examples of clients that you've kind of worked with yes. and how do you, you change sure. them from being, obviously not being able to throw their voice to mm. their experiences or any sort of case studies? Yes, uh, so one of my clients, he works for a company, a very, um, in a way, it's a very established company. And uh, even though that company serves a certain group of people, but in that industry, it was very well known. And he is probably the only expert in the company. But whenever he spoke in meetings or speak in conferences, people never saw him as the expert. Whenever he finished talking, no one had any reaction. And then he was wondering, he said, did my message land? Did they hear me well? But there was no reaction. So, And also people were not seeing him as the expert. Instead, almost seeing him as an admin staff. Uh, whatever work they have, they just give it to him. So he was very frustrated. And uh, during our working together, he was developing his voice. So his voice became much more powerful. And uh, when he was traveling after his business trip, he came back to the office. Uh, his colleagues were saying, wow, what happened to you? Just by traveling, your voice has become, uh, in a way, very sexy. <laughs> and uh, sexy in a way because his speech was deeper and his voice is having more gravitas. Okay. And uh, also that his boss, because of the voice that he has developed, he has more confidence. And uh, his boss started to notice his confidence as well. And because he has the uh, expertise, so his boss set up a specific position, a special specific position just for him. And that position itself was already saying that he is the only expert in his company. And not only that, uh, not only that, but also he started to notice when he was speaking in conferences, people started to pay more attention. People came up to him after he spoke. There was one time he was only a panelist one of the four panelists. But many people came to him after the panel discussion and he collected a, a big stack of business cards. <laughs> so he was sharing with me, he said, in the past, this business cards, this stack of business cards, it would take me about uh, two months, provided that every, every week I was speaking. Right. So now just by being one panelist, I can collect so many business cards. 
And many of them, they came from uh, some of the top government agencies who wanted to work with his company. That's fantastic. That's, good. That's a great case study. That's good. Yeah. Well, let's say um, we're taking a wee break. We'll, take, we'll come back with, uh, we'll play our other artist, Sherry Marie, who's all the way from, uh, I think it, where is she from, Atlanta? Not Atlanta, Maryland, I can't remember. <laughs> she's going to kill me for that. But no, uh, is, she's an American uh, R&B artist. She has her tunes played on a few charts in, in England as well, in the UK. So um, we'll come back with her tune. Uh, the one I actually chose, which I need to remember, which I did actually remember, <laughs> is uh, huh? Keeping Our Love Alive. Vocal, uh, Keeping Our Love Alive, that's the tune I'm going to play for a... Um, uh, for Sherry Marie, so you'll hear that, and then we'll come back with uh, Cynthia and get a bit more insight to just what she does, and obviously in general chit chat, and we'll uh, go from there. So uh, we'll be back in a second. <laughs> Ramsey on these going beyond borders. This is your host, Fraser Ramsey, with my guest Cynthia Zai, all the way from Singapore. We are getting very international. We are going beyond borders. As so I do, we shout out to uh, our usual kind of peeps, our supporters. We have, uh, we're going to have, we've got actually added an RB supporter as well. We've got, uh, we do have Kingdom Meads by Ephia Latham. Who, if you, uh, so you can go to kingdommeads.com if you design your own jewelry, if you like your kind of jewelry style, you can design them, you can make your own, or you can pick what's in the shop. Uh, so kingdomweeds.com you can, we've got Natural Soap by Zakia so we've got Natural Soap by Zakia added 
to the loop. And I do have a, if you, I do actually have a, an affiliate code now. If you type in, I think I remember, I think I remember what I said. I think it was Ramsey soap, but I will post the, the affiliate code in the show notes of the podcast. So if you wish to buy some natural soap by Zakia, you can purchase, and she ships all over the place. You can, she goes, she sends internationally, big times. So if you're in, it's very nice soap. So um, also EileenSmith.com, who's a, a live streamer, a podcaster. She does test every live streaming platform just about out there. She will find it and she'll test it to the hill. Uh, but Eileen Smith from EileenSmith.com. She's in Philadelphia. I had the privilege to meet her up with her last year. Uh, also, we have uh, John Drummond from IdeasGoLive.com. He created my business website for EdinburghDusters.co.uk. Um, he's a great guy. He's based in Edinburgh. Um, and also, big shout out. I can't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm lost my train of thought completely. <laughs> oh, Shannon Griffin. That's what I was like. I, I've lost my. I forgot. I'm not done a podcast. A bit rusty in the podcasting side after a wee break. So I'm forgetting my people who support me. But um, as I say to everyone who I know from uh, Shannon Griffin, who for humanities, um, John Drummond, Eileen Smith, um, is Zakia Ringold, and also uh, Ephia Lethem, Kingdom Beads, Natural Soap by Zakia. And all the people who support uh, what we do, and I support them, which I love what they do. So, uh, as I say, it's all fun. It's great doing podcasts, and I say it's great doing uh, what we do and supporting people by going beyond borders um, and let's say going all over the world and finding out different stories, backgrounds of people's lives to inspire people. And that's what it's about uh, inspiring people, connecting, and uh, Making the world a smaller place, and that's what it's about. So as I say, a big shout out to all my supporters, and I apologies if I've forgotten you off the cuff, because I don't have a list in front of me, which I should do, which may make a lot easier. <laughs> Nothing but a live professional recording. <laughs> yes, but um, yeah, keeping it real. But uh, to everyone, anyway, so as I say, back with my guest, um, we've just had Sherry Marie play, we've just had a wee shout out, and as I say, oh, Benita, the first main thing I forgot, BenitaChallis.com, I forgot her, she's at the beginning of the show, and she's a great supporter, I love, love her stuff, love her music. So, Cynthia, um, mm. tell us a bit more, tell us what we don't, tell us people, anything else you want to expand on uh, about your, you just told us about a case study, about your, one of your clients, um, yes. tell us a bit more about your um, I don't know, a case, something different, a case study, any, any more stuff or insights to your business or any more challenges? Uh, how about maybe the, have you had any down moments yourself in your personal life? Maybe you've struggled, not necessarily from your younger days, but from now in your adult life, maybe struggles that you've mm. gone through that you've maybe had to personal barriers that you've had to break through yourself to develop. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I think, um, is uh, in the, for me, I think the struggles or challenges are more when I when I grew up, <laughs> when I'm in as a working adult, because uh, especially in Singapore, uh, as a foreigner coming from coming from China to Singapore, in the beginning, I think working here, especially teaching voice projection, was a big challenge. Because in the beginning, a lot of my friends, even my mentor back then, uh, they were all saying, oh, you are teaching people how to speak. Uh, who would want to learn from you? Maybe you should teach Mandarin. <laughs> so but when my mentor said that to me, I was so, um, so upset with him. So I stopped talking to him. And uh, because I was thinking, I respected you as a mentor, but you didn't even support me in my decision and you didn't what's worse is you didn't even see me uh see my potential because i believe in my own potential i knew what i was capable of i knew what i could achieve and so uh, regardless of all other people's opinions so in the end i decided to pursue what i want to do which is to teach people how to project a more powerful voice so that was a lot of struggle in the beginning, a lot of no's in the beginning, a lot of rejections. So I think in my very first job when I graduated, I was afraid of rejections, but life gave me the opportunity to deal with rejections. So in the beginning of my business, I faced a lot of rejections, but um, I knew what I was capable of. So I have faith in myself and that really helped me to really grow my business. So now, not only I help clients in Singapore, but also I help clients all over the world. 
and I have helped clients from 46 countries. And for myself, that I was able not only just to do training, speaking in Singapore, but also all over the world in 15 countries and across four continents. So I think um, looking back... So how did you how yeah. did you manage to gain all these clients in different countries? I mean, forty six countries yes. were they all kind of just by online sort of? Yeah. So you know or? that just now, yeah, just now I I forgot to say that in one of my earliest clients, uh-huh. my very first client, uh, not very first client, but one of the earliest clients from online was actually from uh, LinkedIn. I didn't even know. You know that was a probably half. Half a year later, I changed my profile to self-employed voice coach. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, not, not, not long later, I got an inquiry from LinkedIn. Wow. So my first online client was from LinkedIn. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, so I think LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and also my website at the time, uh, they all have helped me to get clients from all over the world. That's great. And yeah. also... Yeah, and also, even in the beginning, even in the first half a year when I was doing my business, I was having clients before and after video comparisons. So that was very important. And that's why that I share with the new entrepreneurs, you have to have not only just clients' uh, testimonials, but also based on the nature of your work, especially my nature of the work, is the voice change. So I have to show them. And those early videos, they really have helped me uh, to get clients because they can see the change in their voices. That's brilliant. Fantastic. That's good. Mm. So what, what do you, tell us about out with work, what do you do is like hobbies and what's your interest in uh, you, like movies or whatever, or TV shows like crime, uh, crime dramas or whatever. Tell us. Yeah. So I think uh, I like movies or TV drama series that challenged, challenges my intellect. Okay. Because I, I think studying in China that especially always, almost always the top three students, uh, in a way, I am very intellectual and I like to take on the intellectual challenges and uh, watching those really challenged me intellectually. So I love those. And uh, even actually watching Criminal Minds, I felt that my IQ (laughs) increased even more. (laughs) And uh, yeah, so I like watching them. Um, That's one of my hobbies. That's good. Well, I'll see do you know what other things apart from most watching movies anything else you do at all oh so i like traveling mm-hmm. and uh Where because you... of the work that i do yeah right. one is that i speak around the world that also gave me the opportunity to travel around the world so i really uh love that so and have, also where have you traveled yeah. to what countries have you been to apart from obviously singapore oh, and china i've been to <laughs> so many yeah uh the united states a lot mm-hmm. of times any particular uh, part, what Argentina, parts, what parts of the United States? Um, both East Coast and West Coast. Okay, fantastic. Uh, like California, Seattle, Los Angeles. Um, so the entire California all and right. uh, East Coast, uh, like New York, all the way up to the Niagara Fall area. Cool. And then, yeah. Fantastic. So also some of the national parks in the U.S. And also you said Argentina as well. Yeah, Argentina, and then went to the end of the world, so-called end of the world, and uh, also Europe. So I do a lot of work in Europe. So I was uh, almost traveling extensively in Europe. That's fantastic. And then also uh, now the first uh, African country that I went to was uh, Morocco. Wow. So what other countries have you? would you like to still go to or try and go to? I am planning to go to Iceland. Iceland, Grums, Espe- Iceland. Yeah, especially going there in winter <laughs> <laughs> to experience a very different landscape. Could be quite warm, not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so people always thought that I was crazy because every winter uh, I always go to a place where it's very cold. Mm-hmm. Because in Singapore it's always summer. So winter I want to have a change. I want to have the real winter. So every winter I went to different cold places. Like there was one year I went to Russia. <laughs> wow, Russia, the Russia can <laughs> <Yeah>. get cold. <laughs> yeah, it's very cold. And so everybody, so what part? Have you been, you've been to the UK? You've been to London? 
Uh, not yet. So no. I think UK is on my list. On yeah. your list. Yeah, so your bucket, not yet so. because, because it's not part of EU anymore. So well, we're not. We're still. Well, we're still just part of the EU at the moment. We're not quite left okay. yet. So you can still. Oh, okay. We're still we're still jump. We're not left officially yet. It's leaving, but yeah. uh, not official at present. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, well, as I say, UK, Scotland, uh, England. As I say, there's uh, many things. Um, I was going to say winter in Scotland can vary from being a mild winter to not really not as cold as Russia or Iceland to say the least. So it's actually not too bad. Uh, or yeah. so you'd actually enjoy it. Um, but always every day you can always get potential clients uh, over here as well. Yeah, I there. have uh, a few clients based in London. That's fantastic. Well, we, so do, yeah. you talk, do you have any, what about, I always, I always ask my guests usually as well, sometimes do you ever have like a, when I say a faith, are you a church person at all or are you not a church person? I always ask these kind of questions, so it was good to... Uh, no, so I think that's, that's probably the other thing uh, that if you want to know about China is that in China the religion is not very strong. Okay. So, um, but now you can see even actually some of my uh, classmates now they are in they are uh, Christian. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they are in in China now. They are more people. They started to have certain religion, oh. but I didn't have it. And also, even though I read a lot of books on Buddhism, but right. I I prefer to uh, remain as a free spirit yeah, right. because. Uh, I, I personally, I believe in spirituality, which mm -hmm. is a little bit different from the religion's spirituality. That's so cool. I believe that we we came from a source, and uh, our whole life's work is to have the return to the return to the qualities that we have as the source. Okay. So that's what I believe in. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So tell us, um, where what's your What's your goals now? I mean, what from now from this day on? What do you want to achieve going forward? What's your have you got like a five, a two, five year goal, ten year goal that you want to try and aim for uh, going forward? Have you got any sort of set targets? Mm. So for me, people, this maybe people also will get surprised because for me, I was not even when I was young, I was not a very I was not someone who has a very uh, clear goal that I must achieve that. Okay. So um, many a time that it is always something, what things came to me. So I'll grab it when it's something that I like, when it's something that I'm passionate about, I will grab it. So if you say five or ten years, um, I think one is in terms of business, I will continue developing my business um, and also to have a bigger reach. Uh, that's for five years and then 10 years i cannot say maybe i'll do something related more to to spiritual development <laughs> yeah yeah that's good yeah um have, have you is, have, how many, um, that's good i've got to say the question have you ever how many have you done many podcasts have you done podcast interviews before uh yes so i've done a few uh, done a few podcasts how do you find them? Because you, 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 are you quite? Do you always find them quite nervous, or do you feel okay? Oh no, I feel it's okay, and I enjoyed it because yeah. when I was in college, I was in school radio station, so I was oh, talking wow. to a microphone. Yeah, ah. talking to a microphone most of the times. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, I enjoy speaking. I enjoy talking, even though I'm an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably line you up with a couple other podcasts with people who, who would be interested in interviewing you, which would be great. So you can, uh, sure, I can, thank you. There are actually people in the, in, in the network that I've got, so you could hook up and you can go and you can be on it, be interviewed by them, so as well. Okay. Um, but sure, I'll, hook, thank I'll you. hook you up with them in the in the chat. So and yeah. just with the time don't, the time zone difference could be fun. So, but it's cool. Yeah. But tell tell people where let's tell people where they can connect with you, and if they want hmm. to. Find chat to you, connect with you, what, take up your business offer, whatever. So okay. Tell people where sure. they can connect with you online. Yeah, I think they can get to know me a bit more. Uh, one is to go to my website. Uh, so my website is powerfulexecutivevoice.com. So from there, they can uh, read more about me, find out more about what I have done with my clients. Uh, so that's one place. And then two is uh, they can get a free three-part, uh, very systematic course that I did. 
And that takes them step by step to let them know that where the potential is in their voices and also how they can develop their voice. So that's a three-part crash course that I did, and they can find it at bit.ly, which is bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash voice crash course. Okay, cool. So hey, what about, are you on Twitter? Are you obviously Twitter, LinkedIn, that type of thing? Uh, so yeah, they can find me on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Twitter is not a lot because in Singapore, Twitter is not very popular. Okay. <laughs> so it's more about uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Or they can find me on YouTube. So YouTube, I have uh, over 100 videos. Mm-hmm. It's mainly that me talking about two to three minutes to share one voice problem or one voice technique. Fantastic. And they can also find some of my clients before and afters uh, in the YouTube channel. So they oh. can just go to YouTube, search uh, Cynthia Voice Coach. Okay. Well, we'll have all your we'll have all your these links that you've just said your website in the show notes of the on Podbean and the uh, for people to see they can uh, check them out and uh, click on them and sure. connect with you as well. I was going I'll to suggest that we can connect you with. Uh, there's a couple of people I'll connect you with. There's uh, Haney Haney Lee. She is Korean but Australian. Uh, she was actually an actor, actress in the famous Neighbours, famous Australian soap Neighbours, um, and, wow. and she is in. She's a singer, a songwriter, and maybe mm. there's a way. I don't know. You might be able to benefit her in some way or form, uh, connecting with her. She, sure. She's yes. kind of your side, your sort of side of the world uh, when it comes mm. to. Yes. Uh, as a possibility you can, can have a chat maybe to help develop a short way of developing her in some way you can have a uh, yes. so can, there's also I'll connect you with Altavis Pelzer who does uh, the, uh, the easy, Speak Easy podcast that's what it is I'm trying to remember Speak Easy she does mm. she does a podcast and she does, she's a voice coach and uh, like it's uh-huh. coaching because she, you can maybe get her you can be on her podcast okay, at some point sure. as well thank you but, you are uh, a connector. <laughs> yes, we all, uh, we'll connect people. In the, it's all in the group, so you just need to have a chat and uh, you can uh, sort something out, out with. Um, but, uh, but yeah, well, as I was going to say, well, that's basically, I think, time we, I think we'll wrap things up there. I think you've got anything else you want to cover or say before we kind of wrap up the show? Um, no, I think it's uh, whatever you do, uh, whatever you want to do, um, ignore what other people tell you follow what you believe in yourself that you can do okay that's good good advice and good advice uh, mm-hmm. and it's, i think it's the best the best advice is doing what you know focus because sometimes you i suppose in life you can get too tied up with so many people or so many ideas and you just have to sort of yeah. say stop hit the stop button come back to you and think well what can i do what can i want to develop and just develop it, that type of thing, instead of trying to wait for, sometimes wait for other people all the time uh, so you can move things forward. Um, yeah. And it's not easy. And sometimes it's without, you don't want to move, without offending people, sometimes it can be, you don't want to be, <laughs> without you, sometimes you just got to make those decisions to sort of say, well, I'm sorry, but I have to, you can have to do you. Oh, and just so keep moving, yeah. moving you, forward, you can you know? do that without offending other people. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, <laughs> like what I did, which was, I just ignore them, but I never told them <laughs> to their face, and, no, you're wrong. And then I went back and do whatever I believe in. <laughs> that's the, sometimes it's the best strategy. Sometimes, sometimes that's the best way. But it's cool. Well, listen, uh, thank you for being on the Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders podcast. Uh, It's good to uh, thank you for reaching out. um, And uh, hopefully it's been okay for yourself. Uh, I will uh, have this, you have all your links. If you send me your links, uh, I can add them to the show notes at the end and we'll get this out as soon as possible. Uh, Get it all and we'll we'll send you the link to everything. And people can tune in and hopefully enjoy listening to Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia Jai. Not Cynthia Zai, so I'll get it right. Yes. So uh, the all first the way one. from uh, all, all, so <laughs> Cynthia Jai, uh, all the way yes. from Singapore, originally from China, all the way from Singapore, uh, voice coach. Um, so if you're looking to for some personal development in what you do, whether it's singing or speaking, uh, she will happily help. There's courses if you want to more, make your more voice more about speaking. Uh, more about speaking. I wouldn't so, teach them singing. <laughs> there we go. So if you're uh, in show, so this actually before we go, before we go, just quickly. Tell us a little about about your singing. You do, you don't, you don't quite. You sing a little, but you don't quite sing much, do you? No, because I think um, my passion is still more about helping people to support people to discover their own talent. So that's why I think uh, for me, uh, in terms of the speaking voice coaching, that actually support my passion. 
Okay. Singing is good. I enjoy singing, but it doesn't help me to support other people. Right. Okay. It may entertain people uh, at times. <laughs> well, we can. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So I can sing, but I'm mainly helping people with their speaking voice. That's good. Well, hopefully, maybe one day yeah. we'll, you'll have a recorded single or something with your music. Sure. Uh, one day, yeah. which should be good. I, mean, be, I could be a wee surprise in the bag there down the line but it will, it will come about but anyway but thank you for Cynthia to being on the show thank you to everyone who's listening uh, Ramsey on these going beyond borders as I say love connecting people love it, talking to people from different backgrounds different places in the world and as I say uh, keeping it keeping it real keeping it unleashed and uh, as I say it's all, all good but take it easy to everyone who's been listening have a great one till next time bye for now bye